Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. Today, what I want to talk about just briefly is a question that I receive surprisingly often, which is about uh, why I talk about the god Odin as the chief of the Norse gods rather than Tyr. And the answer is really simple. Uh, it is that in the surviving sources for Norse myth, Odin is the chief god. Tyr, in our surviving sources, chiefly the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda, which are not the same, but are related books written down in the 1200s in Iceland. I'll uh, link to a card in the top right, which uh, links to a video that talks more about those two books. Those two books present a pretty clear picture of a pantheon in which the chief god is Odin. Now, that does not mean that Odin was always the chief god, or that he was the chief uh, to all people at all times and all places, uh, as far as the uh, Germanic or, or more strictly Scandinavian pantheon went. In fact, it's quite likely that Thor was the chief god for many people. Uh, he seems to have been much more popular based on archaeological evidence, such as the popularity of Mjolnir amulets, uh, or his, the, the occurrence of Thor in place names or personal names, much more frequent than Odin. Uh, but the fact remains that for anything we have sources for, which is really late Viking Age myth in Iceland as transmitted orally and then written down in the Poetic Edda, Odin is the chief god. Now, where does this notion that, Th that, that Tyr is the chief god come from? Basically, it is based on one fact, which is that his name is cognate with, descended from the same ancestral word, same Proto-Indo-European word as Greek, Zeus, Latin Jupiter, uh, that is two words, is you, and then Piter, which means father, and Sanskrit Djaus, uh, most often seen as Djau Pitar, father Djaus, same way as, as uh, Jupiter being father Zeus. These all come from Proto Indo European Djaus, or something very similar to that. That's our current reconstruction for that word. I have a video in the uh, top right linked in a card that you can see for more information about Proto-European. And so the fact that his name is the same, etymologically speaking, as the chief god of the Greek and Roman pantheons, not of the Indian pantheons, uh, Sanskrit, Joust doesn't have that, that prominence, has led people to assume that at one time he must have been the chief of the Germanic pantheon and that Odin only later took over. That is possible, but it's not attested anywhere, right? Certainly, yes, uh, somewhere along the continuum from Deus, Proto-European, to Tiwas, Proto-Germanic, to Tyr in Old Norse, or Tiu in Old English, or something like Tsio in Old High German. Yes, somewhere on that continuum, maybe he was the chief god, but we don't know that. And it's irresponsible for us to sit around and speculate about, uh, you know, where or when or how he was superseded by Odin, even though, of course, a lot of, you know, the, the internet guru types or, you know, the 19th, 20th century uh, crazy German uh, pseudo-intellectual types have speculated about that along the years. It's really not a part of Norse mythology. Norse mythology is based on things that actually come from the Middle Ages, right, in the form of the Eddas or some other uh, uh, not quite as important sources, some rune stones, some sagas, things like that. Now, the, the who is Tyr, right? That, that itself is a question that reveals how far he has fallen from being the chief god, if he ever was, because in our surviving Norse sources, Tyr does basically two things. He gets his hand bitten off by Fenrir, uh, as I've discussed in uh, my video about uh, Tyr. I'll link that in the top right uh, now. And uh, he accompanies Thor to uh, Jotunheimr, where the giants, the enemies of the gods live, to get a cauldron from his father, who is a Jotun named Himir. That's basically what Tyr does. Uh, Snorri says that he's also one of the gods who has a great duel at Ragnarok. He fights uh, Garmr, the dog of hell. This may, in fact, be a memory of a time when he fought Fenrir, um, rather than that Odin did, that may reflect, of course, once again, that he was chief of the gods at one time, but who knows? 
right? We really need to keep things in context. If you want to say that Tyr is the chief of the Norse gods, you are factually incorrect. Odin is the chief of the Norse gods as far as the surviving sources attest. Thor uh, may well uh, have been uh, in a lot of places and times based on his obvious popularity based on archaeological finds, personal names, place names, things like that. To say Tyr is the chief god is just plain incorrect. We can speculate that he was the chief god perhaps in proto-Germanic times, but it does really nothing for us because it doesn't illuminate any of the myths in times that are better known to us. All right. Well, I hope that was somewhat uh, informative or illuminating as far as this question goes. Some people will be pissed about it just because, you know, people get attached uh, to these notions that are advanced by gurus, but I'm not here to tell you what you, <laughs> I don't know, what you want to hear, as cliche as it sounds. I'm here to represent to you uh, as factually as I can what our medieval sources say. And uh, if you want to hear more about that, you can also check out my translations. I have translated the Poetic Edda and the Saga of the Volsungs, two of our most important sources of Norse myth. Those are available from Hackett Publishing, as well as his audiobooks narrated by me. And soon, uh, in fall 2019, my uh, uh, ultimate edition of Hall of All with the Old Norse text, a full commentary by me, and both of my translations, both um, my more academic translation as well as my Cowboy Hall of All, uh, will be available in my third book called The Wanderer's Hall of All from Hackett Publishing Company. Well, for now, from beautiful Wyoming, please know that I'm wishing you all the best. <laughs>